Hi there, Betty Mae here, and today I'm having hot pot in a more unconventional way. So as you know, it is a uh, lockdown for many of us uh, due to the COVID-19 viral pandemic, but it doesn't mean that we can't get social and have a little fun. Today, myself and three other foodies will be doing virtual hot pot live on YouTube and um, Instagram. And I'm just waiting in the lobby for my usual hot pot delivery order. As you can see, I'm practicing safe elevator techniques. I didn't touch anything. There was only two people in the elevator. Used my elbows and um, now I'm in the lobby not touching anything as well. So stay tuned as I give you some hot pot tips and tricks and just really show you that you can still have a good time and get virtual with it during lockdown. Um, stay safe, everyone. Be careful, social distancing. Um, but you know, your human beings need to socialize. So let's see if we can do that today. All right, my order's here. Not use any hands. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Yes, I will grab those. Oh, this is everything I need to have a good hot pot. Oh man, this is multiple tripper. I'm by myself. Okay, logistics. I think I could do one trip. I'll have to put the phone down, but I can do one trip. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> one trip, one hand, y'all. Look at that, it's my left one too. Let's just do some curls here while we wait for the elevator. Yes. Um, need the exercise considering this is gonna be a big mukbang. This is enough food for two, eaten by one. Me. All right, back in the safety of my own home. Let's do some unpacking here. So typically the hot pot doesn't actually come with a portable gas range. Um, you will need this to cook up the broth and cook up the food and keep the food warm. But if you don't have this, you can totally use your stove top. Um, in my case, my stove top is being used as a um, drying rack. Awesome. So let's see if I can set this up. Vegetables. The meat selection. I actually have the menu. When I'm eating it, I'll make sure I eat it so we know what's going on. But check out that marbling. Additional curls of meat. Yes. It looks super fresh. It smells real good. For our veg selection, we've got some mushrooms, always great. Ooh, also got some fried rice. So if you're like me, you need a starch or a, a base, usually it has you covered. They've got side dishes, something to snack on, because sometimes it takes a while for the hot pot ingredients to come, or you want to just drink and chat with your friends and really long heat experience, they also have like at least a side dish. And I'm assuming this is the broth. Not a fan of spicy food per se, because I like to taste the ingredients. But they do have a spicy broth and they do have a pork bone broth. I've chosen a mushroom broth. So this is their well mushroom broth. I love enoki mushrooms. Got some cucumbers in there, dates, goji berries. This looks great. It looks spicy, but it's actually the tomato, so it's mild in flavor. So both of them will go into my smoke pot. Another big thing about hot pot is that um, if you take too long to set up and the food or the broth gets cold, it's just as easy as just heating it up again in your uh, confection plate. Yes. Mm. Unfortunately, I don't have a dining room table and I ran out of space on the counter, so we're gonna be eating on the floor. I think it's gonna add a certain feel to things, so I'm quite excited. Get this lit, literally. Right. Oh, no, I want it. Is it on? There it is. Blue flames. Once it starts boiling, I can start putting things in and we can start going. That started boiling real quick. Let's turn it down. The rest of my dinner guests aren't here yet. 
Um, note, if you have a small apartment like I do, let's maybe like turn down the heat because <laughs> you're gonna make everything super steamy. Also a great way to heat up your apartment for cheap. Dinner guests are here. Oh wait, wait, we're missing <laughs> oh, Emma. By the way, did, did they did they give you the uh, uh, the bed or the yes. Paper? Yes. I'm just super sweaty right now. I've been running around. My apartment is small and my hot pot's boiling, so I got like the sweats. It was really hard. Yeah. Set up difficult. I was struggling like mad. This is so complicated. I'm like. GoPro, phone, video, everything so complicated. All right, so half our meal has been eaten. I have disconnected from my party mates. Um, I wasn't able to dedicate myself to filming this video. So um, with the remnants of food, I'm gonna go over some more hot pot tips and tricks and show you kind of the carnage. Once again, this is for two people. So the fact that I've eaten this much is super impressive. I really like the collection of sauces. It gave me the feel of a normal hot pot experience. I don't know about you, but I use the sauce to rejuvenate the flavors because you order the same ingredients especially if you get 300 grams of meat, it might get a little tiresome on the palate, but if you have different sauce combinations, like this is salty, this is garlicky, this is tangy, this is like creamy, it changes the flavor. Not only that, but like deciding which side of the pot you cook the food in. Hot pot etiquette. Even though you're by yourself, you still want two pairs of chopsticks. One ideally would be to eat with. Um, if you have a wooden or a uh, plastic chopstick, you to differentiate. In my case, I've got dark and light. So this one is for all the raw ingredients that goes into the pot, so I'm not cross-contaminating. This is the one that goes into my mouth, which is already cooked food. The downside to eating at home is that you don't have a server coming around pouring water or broth into your mix. So it's easy enough just to get a kettle and just pour when you have your sauces evaporating. A lot of people don't think that you can have a good drink with a hot pot, but I find that beer actually goes really well with hot pot. It's just like when you go to a bar and you eat a lot of flavorful, spicy, salty foods. Um, the beer just kind of cleans your palate. I wouldn't go for wine. It's just too defining. Similarly, cocktails are just too many mixes in with such a wide, wide variety of foods. Um, I only have an IPA, but I would recommend like a light lager or something. It just kind of finishes the mouth a little bit cleaner, a little bit lighter, just so it balances better with all the heavy sauces and ingredients. All right, so we're gonna make a sauce. I've got this wonderful little jar of sesame oil. Pour that in there as a good base. I like the sesame, creamy sesame paste too. Let's, let's just use it all. Yeah. That'll go right in there. I also like garlic in the mix. So put the garlic in there. Green onion for a little bit of freshness. We'll give that a stir. And here's our little dipping sauce. And there's just so many different ingredients that you can kind of customize. Be warned, the chili oil is very spicy. This is more of like a salted bean paste, and this one has like a nice tangy flavor to it. Yeah, real interesting. I typically start with the meat. Um, as you can see, I've cleared two dishes worth. Um, girl can eat. So our pot is just about percolating here. I'm gonna give it a little bit more time so it can fully come to a nice boil. The food will cook up quicker. With the meat and a few of the other ingredients like the tripe, you do wanna leave them in for a short amount of time just to get the perfect texture and consistency with it. Do the other ingredients like um, the mushroom and the vegetables can sit a little longer in the pot. Even the potato has a quicker boil up time. Um, at least show they keep it at a fairly larger size so that it doesn't disintegrate in the pot. And I especially like, oops, 
help not. Uh, the great thing about eating alone or eating at home is that you can touch anything because it's all going to go in your mouth anyways and not to mention it gets boiled up so that's sanitation. You can also make a special request for their bibs. Things do get messy but being at home means you can just kind of change and clean up. That's pretty handy and VIP members get masks. These are hot commodities right now so got a few in my set to rock and be safe with. Also got napkins and chopsticks, so everything you need to really throw a successful hot pot party. Um, for one or with enough food for two. Okay, how are you looking? Nice and bubbly. So this is our raw chopsticks. This is the beef, right in there. That's my mushroom broth. Let's do a piece of lamb. The tomato broth. I'm really a big fan of the tomato broth. I think it's excellent. It just only looks like it's spicy, but it isn't. Okay, well, let's just put some more in. Let's, let's just clear, clear the trays. Why don't we? That's a very Chinese mentality. It's a little bit left. Let's just finish it. Finish it. Got some oyster mushrooms cut down to size. Go. There are two types of hot pot chefs those who cook and put into the bowls and those who just simply eat and scoop or have people scoop for them. I typically fall into the latter, but when you're doing this by yourself, you really have no choice. Um, I also like using both broths, especially if you have the option of two. So I'm gonna do everything, one in each. Okay, that's, yeah, just, that's not gonna happen. My chopstick skills need working on. <laughs> This is their shrimp paste. So what you do is you use a spoon, you get a glob. Um, it's recommended that you kind of curl it into a ball. Essentially what you're doing is you're making your own um, balls. So that just goes in there. I am just doing this for myself so I'm less picky, so I'm not gonna make it into a perfect round. It's just gonna glob right in. Not typical, but they've also kindly included some edamame beans and some fruit and the fried rice for myself. Just a little sides. The beans are going really well with my today. The fried rice and nice base for all the meats. And a little bit of dessert and a palate refresher after once I'm done with this. Admittedly, I'm not a fan of vegetables, um, so I'm not gonna eat it. It's just the texture of it, it's just it's not appealing <laughs> to me, so. Harden my lack of beans in this broth. Also gonna put in, this is aorta. So, giant heart valve. Let me put my uh, little bit of dust there. Let's try that again. Let's get another piece, there you go. It's my aorta. It's got a nice um, rubbery kind of cartilage texture to it. I am a textural eater, so I do enjoy the way this comes out. And we have tripe. Another great textural piece. This one you only want to keep in the broth for seven seconds. So I'm actually going to pick it up with the chopsticks I eat from. I'm hoping the, the heat of it would sanitize it. Let's just dip it in for seven seconds. One locomotive, two locomotive, three locomotive, four locomotive, five locomotive, six locomotive, seven locomotive. You want to overcook it or oversaturate it with um, broth. That way you get the intended texture and taste. Into your little plate. I think I could, because I'm eating alone, I could have put it just right in my mouth, but let's have a bit of civility, shall we? Now for the taste test. We're gonna dip into the sauce we just created, though you can absolutely have it plain because it's cooked in the mushroom broth, so it had a little bit of flavor. Nice and saucy. Ooh. Mmm. I know you can hear the rubbery chew of it. Real nice. Maybe put a little bit too much garlic. It's a little bit too bitter, but really great flavor. Okay, it looks like the meat's already browned up. This is another one you want to keep an eye on. You don't want to overcook it. Using that wonderful sieve ladle, so you're not carrying any extra broth in. It goes into our plate. I'm gonna scoop up all the meat because we don't want it dry. And 
because I'm eating for myself, um, any of the other ingredients that I accidentally pick up that I don't want to, I want to leave in the broth percolating, I can just dump back in afterwards. She says clean, right? Time to eat. Go, put the dip in. Mmm. Meat's my favorite part of hot pot. I just feel like you can eat more of it. It almost feels healthier, quote unquote. But I think I need a little bit more punch in the sauce for the meat. So I'm gonna add in this preserved, I wanna say bean or tofu into it. Just a little, cause it is saltier. It'll give me some punch. Also change the color of my sauce a bit. Let's try some lamb with it this time. The lamb is a little fattier than the beef was. Mm. That's real nice. Mm. I just use a napkin out of habit, but dining alone and dining at home in the comfort of your own house means you can be as messy as you want. No one's watching. You can just use your hands. No judgment here. Is that egg? Let's find out. Was that an aorta? An aorta that I didn't, I fished up too long that now has a texture of rubber. Still gonna eat it because we don't waste food. That's real nice. Oh. Let's look for our balls now or rounds. There we go, that's one of our fish paste, and here's another one of them. Well, I don't think the shapes look too bad there. Yeah. Let's give them a try. Another thing, too, is that you can take a break from hot pot, walk around, get your second wind, and come back and eat more. All you need to do is just boil it up again because all your ingredients are essentially raw. So, super convenient. Just leave the set up, walk around, do something, and then come back and have your second lunch and your first dinner. Oh, hot. But really great texture to that, really great taste. You get a lot of that fishiness that you want from a shrimp paste ball. Excellent. One that I was a little squeamish about and isn't everyone's cup of tea is duck blood. Let's go for a smaller piece. It's a bit of a, a mind thing because it's blood, but it's solid. As you can see, we're gonna put it up here and boil. So you would think that it would just disintegrate into the broth. The reality is that it keeps its shape. And when you eat it, it's almost like gelatin cartilage. I'll show you in a second. Let's get our mushrooms are done. Let's push them out. I'm glad they're cut down to size. So the mushrooms aren't part of the set. This one's just an add-on. I, I personally like mushrooms. It's got like the texture of the meat, but a bit more balance and some lightness to it. Oh, forgot about our aorta. No. But at least with all our sauces, if you don't like the flavor of something, you can just mask it. And for those of you worried about overeating for a hot pot, it's actually quite difficult too because in between smaller servings of little foods that you put into the pot and bowl up, your stomach's allowed to rest and then you actually realize how full you are. So uh, I'm getting to that point. Mushroom. Um, another fun thing about being at home is that this whole set you order at a fixed price and it comes with six ingredients, but since you're at home, if you are craving anything or want to add anything, the fridge is only a few steps away, so you can easily put in eggs, additional vegetables, um, I got quail eggs, so that would have been a fun one to put in or add in, but honestly, this is a lot of food for one person, or two, let alone one. Duck blood is done. There it is. I'm surprised it's not just disintegrating like I mentioned earlier and it's, it's holding its shape. Better go, better go, I dropped it. But even my chopsticks, it's not piercing it. It's like jiggly and wiggly. It's got a lot of flavor on its own, but I still like sauce to mask some of it. Or still want the sauce to mask some of it. This is my Play-Doh's miscellaneous. This is real life. Oh. Oh, that's weird. Yes, when did you get the food dropped off? 
<laughs> it's like gelatin. Jiggly, it's not bad, but I've never had blood solid. The kelp knot, it's got a great texture to it. I love seaweed. It's hot, it's tasty. Whew. Mm. And the mushrooms that came in my mushroom broth, the gnocchi. Another great texture. I find that Chinese eating is all about textures. You want a good mix of them. Chewy, spongy, dull, spongy. What else? Sticky. <laughs> it's all the same. It's too monotonous and you don't enjoy the eating experience because it's about, especially hot pot, it's about getting together and enjoying the actual come up of it. The cooking of it, the scooping of it, the eating, going back to the second and third. Mm. Also, double dipping totally acceptable at home or at your own little dish. I'll hop up for one. Mm. Okay. All right. All right, I think I'm going to end it there. Um, this is definitely a lot of food, enough for another two or three or four <laughs> meals for myself. Um, I want to thank Yoshu for this wonderful feast. Um, I'm glad I got to experience it and to share it with my fellow foodies, as well as all of you guys. Um, once again, just because you are home in quarantine doesn't mean that you can't enjoy good food and support local businesses in doing so. Um, the fact that there was a setup and there's a cleanup also helps to keep me busy. <laughs> so, let's just turn this off. Ooh, ooh, and don't forget the broth. Now that the broth is boiled up, all your ingredients have been added to the broth, you've got an excellent flavor for it as well. So make sure that you save that or use that as future instant noodle base or in fact, you can add all this and make instant noodles or make a nice um, stock out of it. The possibilities are endless. So now, thanks for watching. I'm glad you're able to join us for a hot pot on this wonderful quarantined um, day. Hopefully there's some inspiration, some fun things to do. Um, thanks for watching as always. Please hit the subscribe button for some more food. Feel fun. Until next time, stay safe, be well, drink plenty.